Hi and welcome back to my channel. My name is Marissa and today I'm going to be showing you what I'm planning on reading in October. One, Daughter of Smoke and Bone. I started reading this back in July, I think, and life got in the way and it was slow starting, but it's starting to get good, so hopefully I'll be able to finish it this month. Ghost Stories. This is a new book just got today, actually. It only cost, it was in the $5 bargain bin, so I was like, yeah. 25 Stories of Pure Ghostliness. Cujo by Stephen King. This is an old copy I got from the U, from a used bookstore some time ago. I started reading it, but I never got through with it because, again, life got in the way. So I'm playing hang on starting it again. Monster High. The, this was written by Lisey Harrison, who wrote the Click series. That used to be one of my all-time favorite series, but... And the... It seems like a cute, fun read. So I'm hoping it'll be good. Cray by Tracy Wolf. This is a 2020, I think it's a 2020 book. But anyways, it's about a girl who, who goes to an academy for monsters and she falls in love with a vampire but he's walled himself off. Her words, not mine. And yeah, it's fairly thick. Plus it's got these pages that are like really rough. My whole world changed when I stepped inside the academy. Nothing is right about this place or the other students in it. Here, I am a mere mortal among gods, or monsters. I can't, still can't decide which of these warring factions I belong to, if I belong at all. I only know that one thing that unites them is their hatred of me. Then there's Jackson Vega, a vampire with deadly secrets who hasn't felt anything for a hundred years. Ramona Blue by Julie Murphy. I started reading this book around the same time I started reading Dara of Smoke and Bone. But again, life. life. This crappy year has been a crappy year for all of us. And Sandy by Susan Vaught. This used to be a library book, but they wanted to get rid of it, so I got it. But anyways, it's about an, a mental institution, and there's ghosts involved, and a girl named Forrest. Oh, well, actually, her real name is Forestera. Everyone just calls her Forrest. Good Night Kiss by Earl Stein. This is an old favorite of mine. My cat peed on the original copy, so I got another one a while back. And this has two vampire stories in it, and they're connected. Good Night Kiss 1. Matt and his girlfriend, April, are plunged into a horrifying world of endless night when they encounter the vampires of Sandy Hollow. April is lured away from Matt when a vampire controls her, hypnotizes her with his strange, intoxicating kisses. Now Matt must save April before she gets her final goodnight kiss. Stop that, cat. Goodnight kiss, too. Billy has been to Sandy Hollow before. This summer, he's returning to the little resort town, but not for fun in the sun. He is searching for... Ow! Stop that! 
He is searching for creatures of the night, the vampires who prey on the tourists there. Billy's girlfriend was one of those tourists until the vampires killed her. Now Billy has vowed to destroy them all, even if he must join them trying. And that has an advertisement for another book by Arl Stein called The Vampire Club. I might borrow that one from the library. Sweet Blood. This is another vampire book by Pete Hotman. 16-year-old Lucy Sabo is undead, at least according to her own theories about vampirism. Lucy believes that the first vampires, with their pale skin, long teeth, and uncontrollable thirst, were dying diabetics. And she should know. She's a diabetic herself. When Lucy becomes involved with Draco, a self-proclaimed real vampire, she meets in the Transylvania chat room. Her world begins crashing down around her. Caught up in late night parties and goth culture, she begins to lose control of her grades, relationships, and health. She realizes she needs to make some important choices and fast, but may already be too late. Sounds interesting. Schizo. This is about a boy with schizophrenia. Miles is haunted. Haunted by the grief at the disappearance of his little brother, Teddy. By the black crows that, warm it, that torment his waking hours. By Eliza, the girl who stole his heart and played with it. Desperate to move on, Miles is determined to find out what happened to his brother rid himself of the crows, and set things straight with Eliza. But on top of it all, Miles has schizophrenia, a disease that blurs the line between reality and fantasy that causes his world to close in on him as he tried to, to push it open. I got this book last year, I think. Maybe the year before that. Anyways, I started reading it, but... I really have no excuse. The Dolls by Kiki Sullivan. Ebony Chaval has just moved back to Louisiana after spending her childhood in New York with her Aunt B. Ebony hasn't seen her hometown since her mother's suicide 14 years ago, and her memories couldn't have prepared for, her for what she encounters because pristine, perfectly cared care for, has a dark side full of intrigue, betrayal, and lies, and Evany quickly finds herself at the center of it all. Enter Peregrine Marceau, Chloe St. Pierre, and their group of rich, sexy friends collectively known as the Dolls. From sipping champagne at lunch to hooking up with the hottest guys, Peregrine and Chloe have everything, including an explanation for what's going on in the town. Is that it? Did I really go through all the books already? Well, I guess that's it. I will see you next time.